not I Taqdeer, not I Risala, not I Hadri, not I Tahdeer. Alhamdulillah, Wahda, Salat was Salam, Alam and Lalaki, the Bada, and the Bada, 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 اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد المعلم الجود والكرم وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا مكي يا مدني يا الهام يا قرشي يا ابن عبد المطلب يا رسول الله خلاك ابي وامي يا حبيب الله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما اغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم حق قدره ومقداره العظيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين. We have gathered for a very important topic. الحمد لله. In this house of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. So let me begin by greeting you with the good things of Islam. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. I congratulate the organizers, the brothers involved, under the instruction of my dear brother, Maulana Qasim Hafizullah, and the students of the Islamic Center, and the management here for convening such an important and important event. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them immensely for their thought and their effort and bringing, alhamdulillah, such a beautiful crowd of young Muslims together, alhamdulillah, here of Alameen. The importance of the Dajjal and the significance of the topic that we have gathered for is highlighted in a saying of one of the companions. One of the companions, Sa'ad ibn Dusama, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said a very beautiful thing, and we can relate to what he said once we know what he said. He said, لا يخرج الدجال حتى يذهب الناس عن ذكره وحتى تترك الأئمة ذكره على المنابر. The Dajjal shall not appear except when people fail to talk about him. And the Dajjal will appear in a time when religious leaders will forget mentioning him on the mimbas. This is one of the sayings of one of the companions of the Prophet So Alhamdulillah we have gathered to remember the Dajjal and make mention of him and remind ourselves of his coming. The hadiths of the Dajjal are many. One of the major hadiths of the Dajjal is narrated by a companion, his name was Nawas. It is one of the major and uh, most detailed hadiths of the Dajjal found in the six books of hadith, the hadith of Nawas. Ibn Majah, one of the six scholars of hadith who compiled the six canonical works of hadith Ibn Majah. After narrating that long hadith, he said at the end of it, يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يُدْفَعَ هَذَا الْحَدِيثُ إِلَى الْمُعَذِّبِ حَتَّى يُعَلِّمَهُ الصِّبِيَانَ فِي الْكُتَّابِ At the end of narrating this hadith, he mentions something beautiful. Usually the six books of hadith only narrate hadith and don't give comments to the hadith. You will find hadith narrations, sayings of the Prophet وسلم, and you wouldn't find any commentary on those hadith. But the hadith of the Jal was so important that Ibn Majah made a, a comment after it, which is unusual in the six books of hadith. He said the hadith of the Jal is so important, the hadith of the Jal is so important that it should be given to the primary school teacher so that he can teach the children at an elementary level. Allahu Akbar. 
So teaching our children at the elementary level about the jam. This is what Ibn Majah said, radiyallahu rahimahullahu ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaking about the significance of the emergence of the jam. He said, لَمْ يَكُنْ نَبِيٌّ بَعْدَ نُوحٍ إِلَّا وَقَدْ أَنْظَرَ قَوْمَهُ الدَّجَّالِ There was never a prophet after Nuh alayhi salam except that he warned his nation about the tribulation or the emergence of Dajjal. Prophets after Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, they would warn people about the tribulation of the Dajjal. There is an aqeedah, there is an aqeedah dimension to Dajjal. And the aqeedah dimension is, is it a necessary belief of Islam? Do we have to believe that Dajjal will emerge? To believe in Dajjal, this is one of the absolute essentials of Sunni creed. I.e. there is consensus of all of the scholars of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah in the Ash'ari and the Maturidi schools that Dajjal shall come with his descriptions as a human being. Therefore, if somebody denies the emergence of Dajjal, or sometimes, for example, we meet rationalists, or people who are materialists, for example, and they give different meanings to Dajjal. So they say Dajjal is uh, a not, not a human being, or he's not going to occur, he's not going to be a person the way we understand him to be. The Dajjal in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is referring to an evil time, for example. So they give it a meaning, moving away from the common understanding of Dajjal. This interpretation, this ta'wil to the Dajjal, this also takes one out of the fold of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So it is an essential, not of, it's not one of the absolute essentials of Islam, it is an absolute essential of the creed of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So the denial of the Dajjal doesn't take one out of the fold of Islam, but does one take, take one out of the fold of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah to destruction and to misguidance? What was the Aqeedah dimension? And we need to know the ranks of Aqeedah. There are three things in Aqeedah. There is one category of issues that one can differ on. Those are the differences, the furu'i, the branches of Aqeedah issues, such as the issues that the Ash'aris and the Maturidis differ upon. Then there are issues, the second category of issues are those that if you disagree upon them, you leave the fold of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And then there are issues that if you disagree upon, or doubt, or deny, you leave the fold of Islam. These are the three categories of Aqeedah issues. So the denial of the Dajjal, or giving Dajjal an interpretation that moves away from the common understanding to say that the Dajjal in the Hadith refers to some evil time, for example, that does not necessarily refer to a human being, then this leads one out of the fold of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The word Dajjal in the Arabic language, I was checking a number of dictionaries to relate to the original meanings of the word Dajjal. If you are familiar with the Arabic lexicon and the Arabic language, you will know that words are derived from other words. There are three radical letters in the Dajjal, the word Dajjal. Dal, Jim, Lam. And Dajjala has a number of meanings in the Arabic language. I'm just going to touch upon some of them. Dajjala means, one of the meanings is to smear something, to stain something. For example, the Arabs used to smear and stain their camels with some mud. So this act of staining, in Arabic they say Dajjala. He smeared or he stained something. And the tar that they would use or the mud they would use is called Dujayl. Likewise, if they use dung, for example, they called it dujail 
or Dajjal. Not Dajjal, Dajjal. Another meaning of the, the word Dajjala means to compress and also to traverse, to travel. Another meaning of the word Dajjala is to confuse and to perplex. Another meaning of Dajjala is the act of mixing two things together. Like they would say, huwa yadjulu biddalwi. Another meaning of the word Dajjal is somebody who has one eye. That is the literal meaning of the word Dajjal. Another meaning of Dajjala is Dassa, the one who lies, or the one who deceives. And Dajjal would be the emphatic form on the scale of Fa'al for Mubalaha. Dajjala yudajjilu tadjilun which would mean somebody who excessively lies, who excessively deceives. So he's not just a deceiver, but he is a very deceitful person. The word Dajjal has been mentioned in a number of hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ. One of them is very important. All of them are very important, but one of them is very relative here. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in a hadith that 30 men that are Dajjals shall appear after me. 30 men that are Dajjals shall appear after me. Sayyati min ba'di Dajjaluna thalathuna. The Prophet ﷺ said, Each one of them will claim to be a prophet. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, La nabiyya ba'di. I am the final prophet, there is no prophet after me. So in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the word Dajjal is referring to anyone who falsely claims prophethood. And we find all of these meanings in the person of Dajjal. All of these meanings in the Arabic language, we find them in the person of the Dajjal. For example, we know that Dajjal, he shall cover the land with his followers, like people would stain or smear their animal with tar. So he will cover the land with his followers. Then he will deceive people because he will claim to be prophets. First he will claim to be prophets. And he will be lying in his claim. So he is Dajjal in that sense. Then he shall confuse people. One of the meanings of Dajjal is to confuse. Because he will show a number of unusual acts. And people will be confused. And many of the weak people in their iman will begin to believe in him. Another word used for Dajjal is Al-Masih Al-Kazzab. Al-Masih, the Messiah. Among the Jews, the Prophet ﷺ told us that Dajjal will be known as the Messiah. And we know in the Jewish rabbinic literature, the Jewish and communities are waiting for a messiah. This is a fact within Jewish belief. The word messiah has masih in the Arabic language has a number of meanings. For example, when it's referring to Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, it means a blessed creation. Also, when, it, when we say masih for Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, it means somebody who cured people with his touch. Masih, from masaha to touch. But why? And when we use this word Masih for Dajjal, it, we use it with another attachment. We don't just say Masih, we say Al Masih al Dajjal, Al Masih al Kazab. You're not allowed to say Masih for him alone. You have to say Al Masih al Kazab, the Antichrist, the one who will stand in opposition of the true Messiah, i.e., Hazrati Isa alayhi salatu was salam. But one of the other linguistic meanings of the word Masih is Mamsuh al Wajh. Somebody whose face is plain on one side. Somebody whose face is plain on one side. Another meaning of the word Masih in the Arabic language the word Masih can refer to a coin on which the writing or the picture has faded away. A coin 
on which the picture